Thank you very much. So, uh, Sassy, well, uh, school age children and youth substance use literacy initiative. Two questions. Why does SASE matter to Health the City? What are we doing to try, what are we trying to change or achieve? So, first of all, what is SASE? Started 2006 in two schools, has grown since then. It's a joint partnership uh, and it's a comprehensive, multifaceted approach to substance abuse that takes a little different approach. It's strengths based and it's big on wraparound. It's not actually a piece of cake, um, <laughs> but it is a layered approach and. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, so here's the layers, folks. Uh, uh, so we have four main streams of activity, and uh, we have, you can see the, the staffing behind that. And that's significant. We've got 18 high schools, about uh, 30,000 high school kids. If you don't have enough bodies, enough boots on the ground, you're not going to have any impact. Uh, STEP is the uh, alternative to suspension program where actually we don't punish kids, but we do try and reconnect them to their goals. There's the partners. Why does it matter, uh, why does SASE matter to a healthy city? You know that we have a bit of an alcohol and drug issue in our culture. There's lots of good things about alcohol and drugs. Alcohol and drugs are, are not good or bad. It's, it's when we have problematic use of them. But we know that some youth are, are really not able to achieve their potential. Um, I don't think we can have a healthy city if we're illiterate regarding alcohol and other drugs. And by literacy, what I mean is knowledge, skills, understanding, and ability to act. Uh, think if you're literate about something, if you're literate about dental health, you probably know that you need to floss and brush and eat well and go for regular checkups. And you know a whole collection, a whole body of knowledge and skills and awarenesses and supports, similarly for driving. Do you think we have that in alcohol and drug? Not even close. So what people tend to think around alcohol and drugs is if you just know the names of the drugs and what they look like, then, then you're, you know, Bob's your uncle, you'll be safe. You know what, that's, there's so much more that we can do. So what is being literate, being informed, being skilled? Then you can be calm, you can be confident, you can be capable, you can act in measured, caring ways over time, not driven by fear and reactivity. So that's what we're trying to do. Uh, connection is prevention. Uh, we're evidence-based. Social-emotional learning underpins everything we do, adult allies. If everybody, and particularly youth, have the ABCs here, they're, are, they're at lower risk for a whole host of things. Autonomy, sense of belonging, connectedness, competence, skilled, capable. And so we, everything we do is designed to build that up in youth. Old approaches don't work too well. If you tell kids drugs are bad and you're bad if you use them, uh, you know, that's kind of the end of the story. You're not really going to engage them. You're going to activate the back of the brain, fight or flight. We use things like capacity cafes where young people teach adults. They're the educators. We involve family every step of the way in everything we do. We have uh, almost as big an emphasis on family as we do on youth. How we do what we do is probably more important than what we do. And because what we do, we do with respect, we treat kids with dignity, we're honest, uh, we create safe places for open, honest dialogue. Um, but we do create dissonance, we do challenge the youth, but we do that after we have a relationship and after we've um, supported them. What are we trying to change or achieve? We're trying to promote dialogue, uh, not just talk, actually, I couldn't find a good picture. Dialogue, back and forth, both ways, lots of listening, right? Um, so what we're trying to achieve is a new paradigm. We're trying to reframe this whole issue, along with many others, of course. So strengths focused, positive, hopeful, building trust, supportive but challenging. Moving away from stigma, shame, reaction, control, flight. We've tried to control drug problems for years, alcohol problems for years. Tried to stamp it out of the schools. We won't let you do that here. Um, you know what? Uh, there's better things that we can do, things that actually work much better, like fostering options, resilience, support, connections, uh, why do people, why do young kids use substances? We need to think about that. How do we as adults and our institutions drive kids to use drugs? How do schools and cities create stress for youth? How do parents and, and caregivers create stress for youth? Now, flip that around. How can schools and cities support kids? How can parents and caregivers make it easier for youth to, to, uh, to realize their potential? So you can do that through some of the things here, and it's, I can't possibly explain all that we do in the little time I have, but I want to say that it's a nuanced approach, it's sustained, it's multi-layered, and uh, it helps youth begin to believe in themselves. Sure, we're trying to reduce death, disease, all these uh, terrible things, but we're doing that by building up positive things. So a lot of this I've touched on already, but inclusiveness, bringing kids closer rather than pushing them away. So rather than transferring them, suspending them, sending them home to sit at home with weed and, and videos uh, for three days and thinking they're going to learn something about why they came to school stoned, we're moving away from all that approach. Uh, <laughs> some of you have experienced that, maybe. Um, 
so uh, youth voice and, and what we're doing has to be relevant to the lived experience of youth. So on Friday night when the girl they're trying to press lights up a joint and hands it to them, does knowing the names and short-term and long-term effects, is that going to help that person in that situation or are there other things that we could do? So um, and what we're trying to do is help the youth navigate through a culture where alcohol and drugs are glamorized, promoted, available all around them. Good, good graphics. Eh? We, we want to, seriously, we want to move away from uh, things that, uh, the, the control, the fear, the uh, uh, trying to make kids behave in certain ways. And we want to activate their options, their goals, what they believe in, what they're passionate about. And the drug use starts to look after itself. Very quickly, kids who've had 10 hours or more of SASE contact report three ways that SASE is making a difference in their lives. And it includes uh, less drug use, even though that is only one of the things that we're targeting. Um, kids going through a STEP program, 63% on entry, using marijuana several times a week. Uh, 10 weeks post, 39% report using marijuana. So some going down. Parents who attended these uh, capacity cafes where the young people are doing the talking and the parents are doing the listening. And kids say to me afterwards, I've never had an adult listen to me that long in my life. And parents say to me afterwards, I couldn't ask my own kid that, but to hear them coming from that person was immensely helpful to me. It's really making an impact on people. And you can see some of the changes here that they're, that they're realizing. Some of the feedback, I joined SASE to have a place to be heard. You can see a difference in these kids. The school is more friendly. A parent who now has a more understanding of what underlies the substance use. The substance use is the symptom. We need to get to the root issues. And so that's where we need the wraparound. We need um, the, the follow-up. We need all of us pulling together. And there's my name. Um, thank you. And there we go. Better world. Thanks. <laughs>